This is my first vlog, and I'm quite excited about it. I'm going to test it out on my sister. <laughs> She's always having to, you know, listen to my stories repeatedly. She's very patient, and she has her own method of ducking, you know, uh, my intrusions in her time. Anyhow. This story, you know, this, I was wondering why am I you know, not wanting to write? And then yesterday I was looking on YouTube and I saw so many youngsters telling their stories and people really listening and watching, you know, listening and watching to all kinds of things, strange things like you know, just cooking some food or their day-to-day -day life in the hills and huge followings. And so I think okay if I'm like finding it so difficult to write, then I may as well tell my stories verbally, like the old days with the new technology. In isn't it quite ironic? Previously, stories were all verbal. Now, so the uh, you know let's look at one thing which I have found. You know that. There are the strangest things that happen. For example, my aunt, she was a very city-bred person. She would love to socialize. She was a member of all the big clubs. And she had very high-profile friends. And she had a very beautiful shop, which was contemporary arts and crafts. And uh, she used to go there and just do select stuff, rearrange things. I had a super personality, etc. And eventually, at the after a period of time, she just quit Mumbai city and she went to Pune. And she never liked that city, but she landed up being there. On the other hand, my folks they would they just didn't like Mumbai. My dad was in advertising, and at one point of time, he just gave it all up, and he went on a painting trip. To the south, and my mom was like, "Oh, where's the next meal going to come from?" And he was like in Kanyakumari, meeting up with some Japanese friend of his, painting away and things like that. And then suddenly, one letter comes and you know, says, "Okay, this guy is going to be coming to your play, our place. You please host him well." And mother and dad. Who was so fond of Pune and you know wanted to stay away from the horrible concrete city with no heart and things like that? Landed up in Mumbai. They used to stay with me, and mother is of course still with me. And so it's just so you know you never know how these things turn out. I thought my aunt would be always like. Going to Bombay gym and raising a toast and stuff like that, and she landed up staying in Baner, and you know, speaking to me about a people tree that was rustling so beautifully, and how she was listening to music while that was going on, and etc. That was one really strange, uh, you know, thing. Can't explain it. Now another one is, I stay right next to the station here. And uh, now, because there's a lockdown, you can't hear all the sounds of the train. But otherwise, they're just whizzing past my window. And according to my brother-in-law, one day one of those is going to derail and land up at my dining table. Anyhow, so I stood one day in the kitchen window and I looked outside and I said, "Wow, you know, how nice!" Because it's just the tracks, and there was a puddle of water just outside the compound wall. Now there was a huge trench before the track started, and that trench the water used to fill, and then these bull rushes, you know, used to grow, wild and high. And there used to be kingfishers. So in one nice rainy day, I was standing in the window and watching this thing. It was looking so beautiful. And I told my husband, you know, doesn't matter that we are next to the track, nothing ever is going to come on the other side. So we have really open space and so much of greenery. Some minor sound going past train and all. Forget it. Shut the windows. You're not going to hear. And believe it or not, what has come right outside that compound wall is a huge station, the Ram Mandir station. Whoever imagined? 
this is a strange coincidence. I mean, I, 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 I was told my daughter won't ever make any, you know, very kadak statements, you know, like otherwise you land up like Bhishma on a bed of arrows. Always keep it flexible, you know, keep it open for possibilities. That's what I feel. So that's another strange uh, reason. I have seven such, you know, peculiar, uh, what should I say? You imagine something else, something, and something else happens. And so contrary, you know, the city, city bread person has gone to the small town and the small town person has come to the city. And eventually it doesn't really matter, you know, because she's, her mother is quite comfortable because it's a green, nice locality and she can just roam around and enjoy the trees. There are a lot of friendly people. This colony still has the old type of middle class and you know, just bother to acknowledge each other. Though the haughtiness of uh, success is slowly creeping into some and eventually I suppose it will filter down. Very bit it filters also into the kids, which is unfortunate for me. But mostly it's a friendly place. Each one is concerned about the other. That's a good. Uh, I have some more of these very strange um, coincidences that have happened. I think I've written them down, I've forgotten. <laughs> I better look up and then record this again. Maybe I have about 10 or such things. They're really strange. <laughs> 